moving on now to uncontained wildfires that continue to tear across California, engulfing homes and forcing thousands of people to flee for their lives. Some people had just minutes to escape yesterday as flames spread quickly through neighborhoods just west of the state's capital of Sacramento. Cal Fire officials in Northern California say one cluster of fires was sparked by a, quote, historic lightning siege when nearly 11,000 strikes ignited more than 367 new blazes in the area. The so-called LNU lightning complex flyer, fires doubled in size on Wednesday, burning more than 124,000 acres and destroying or damaging 175 buildings. Another 25,000 are threatened. At least four people have been injured. Authorities say it is still 0% contained and the flames are being fueled by strong winds. Evacuations in California are even more complicated because of the coronavirus pandemic. Many residents are concerned that staying in shelters could compromise their health, especially as cases continue to surge in the state. Internal medicine doctor Shoshana Ungerleiter is joining us now to talk about this. Uh, doctor, good to see you. So what should people be doing if they have nowhere to go but to a crowded shelter? You know, Vlad, this is such a scary time here in Northern California. My own family members are actually evacuating from their homes today. So this is just unimaginably difficult. Uh, I feel the need to point that out for so many people who are, aren't only, you know, dealing with the pandemic, but also, um, you know, facing facing their own safety um, from risk for, for the fires. So um, for people, you know, in areas for, with uh, fire evacuation orders, the, the primary concern uh, needs to be your immediate safety, getting away from fire and smoke, uh, and for those heading to shelters, it's important to continue to practice social distancing, staying at least six feet away from other people who aren't uh, part of your household, if possible, washing or sanitizing your hands. Um, adults and children aged two and older should be wearing masks, avoid sharing food and drinks with anyone, and then in the shelter, uh, keep your living space clean and disinfect any frequently touched items like toys and cell phones. And if you feel sick when you arrive at a shelter uh, or start to feel sick while you're there, it's really important to tell the shelter staff immediately. Mm. And uh, I'm so sorry to hear about your family, Dr. Ungerleiter, uh, certainly wishing them uh, all the best. I know it's really difficult out there. Um, and, and one of the reasons uh, why it is difficult is because you've got this dangerous smoke filling the skies uh, above much of California. And as you know, one of the most popular safety tools used during the fire season are masks that have those valves or those vents. But now the CDC is warning that those face coverings do not prevent the spread of coronavirus. So this is sort of a two-part question, but first, what makes these types of masks ineffective in curbing the spread of COVID-19? And secondly, what concerns do you have when it comes to the health of infected patients' lungs who are now inhaling wildfire smoke? Well, Vlad, I'll answer the second one uh, first. You know, smoke inhalation, if you're near a fire, is very, very dangerous in general, especially for older adults and those uh, with underlying medical conditions. So protecting yourself and following evacuation orders to get away from fires right now is extremely important. That needs to be top priority for everybody. Um, unfortunately, the air quality uh, in, in much of California is quite poor right now. Um, by now, you know, most of us are quite used to wearing masks and, of course, um, cloth masks and disposable medical masks are, are quite effective in reducing the spread of COVID, but they aren't good for filtering out smoky air. So the N95 masks, those are the ones with the valves, like you mentioned, if, if you have them, are actually the best option for protecting you from harmful particles uh, when the air is smoky. But, but many of these N95 masks um, have a valve, not all of them, but, but many, uh, which allows air to escape when you exhale. Um, it makes it more comfortable, but this is not good for keeping those around you safe from the possible spread of COVID-19. So, you know, for, for folks out there, if your N95 mask has one of those exhalation ports, you can actually wear a cloth or a surgical mask over the top of it. Uh, and that way you still have the health benefits of, of wearing the N95, right, filtering out the smoke, but you minimize the risk of spreading COVID-19 to anyone around you. Um, that said, Vlad, you know, if, if you're safely away from immediate fire danger, the best thing that anyone can do right now to protect yourself from smoky air and from COVID is to stay inside and at home whenever possible. 
Um, doctor, let me now turn to the uh, controversial move of reopening U.S. schools, teachers' unions, uh, in two of the nation's biggest cities are threatening to walk out on the job if they are not, if they are forced to return to the classroom without their health and safety demands met. Colleges across the country now report more than 1,000 COVID-19 cases. And on top of all this, there's a new study that shows pediatric patients age 22 and younger are playing a larger role in community spread than previously thought. Uh, all that to say, uh, Anthony Mason, the co-anchor of CBS This Morning, had a really powerful piece this morning on the air where he talked to some teachers in New Jersey. And one of the things that I was struck by, two points that they made. One, that they care about their health. They care about the health of their students and the health of their families. They want to go back to school. They want to go back to their jobs at teaching, but they are really concerned about uh, the numbers that we see spiking in schools, in universities, for example. The other thing that I thought was really important was one of the teachers said, you know, part of the reason why parents are pushing to get kids back to school is because oftentimes, not all the times, but oftentimes they see teachers and they see schools as daycare centers. They want their kids to go back to school because they want to either return to their jobs themselves, which is understandable, but that they are, teachers do not see themselves as babysitters. And so just because uh, it makes life easier for a parent to have a kid back in school doesn't mean that the teacher wants to put their own life at risk. Given the fact that we've seen these spikes at universities, for example, we're barely into the school season in college. Are you worried that we may be pushing this uh, before we're ready? Oh, Vlad, absolutely. You know, uh, there, there was a study that came out today um, by a, a pediatric journal, um, which, is, which is really important because I think relying on the data, relying on the science when it comes to COVID-19 is the only way we can safely move forward. And, and this study confirms what we've, what we've seen, which is that children infected with COVID-19 tend to have milder symptoms or be asymptomatic. Uh, and, and because of this, um, it's really ineffective uh, to do what many schools and universities are doing, which is rely on symptom checking or temperature monitoring alone to identify new cases. Uh, many of them, as I said, are asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic. We need to, we need schools to really prioritize efforts to stop the spread um, by enforcing things like social distancing, wearing masks, creating more remote learning options, if that makes sense in a community. Um, and, and if testing capacity allows, schools, I think, would really benefit like with what they're doing in Los Angeles, which is testing all students uh, for infection and establishing routine screening protocols for them. Um, the big concern here is that, is that children and, and young adults are going to be one of, the, one of the major drivers of ongoing COVID-19 spread carry the virus into their homes, exposing their parents or maybe their grandparents who are at higher risk of developing severe disease. So we, we absolutely need to put more thought into the continued plans for schools and universities reopening and look to the science and look to the evidence. Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter, uh, as always, thank you so much for your analysis. And again, uh, much love to your family and loved ones in California dealing uh, with not only the COVID-19 crisis, but now um, the, all these fires that are raging across the state. Um, uh, we, wish them, we wish them well. Thank you. Thank you, Vlad.